So this is the Canon EOS R, and this has been my primary YouTube camera for about nine months now, and there's a whole lot of love and hate relationships with this camera, but me personally, I've loved this thing, and actually now I have two. I'm recording on one right now. I got both these cameras with the intention of shooting my YouTube videos with them, but occasionally I have used it in more professional settings for some of the jobs I've gotten, maybe throwing it on a gimbal and trying to match it up with a camera like that red camera over there. And I was actually surprised to see that sometimes you could actually make this camera kind of match the red camera so when you would intercut between the two you wouldn't be noticing a huge difference and the big question are these mirrorless and DSLR cameras getting so good to the point where you guys might not even be able to tell the difference between this and a cinema camera so let's start off by looking at this shot of these two having a fake conversation Oh look, they've decided to shake hands even though they've been hanging out together for the last few hours. That's natural. One of these cameras is a cinema camera. One of these is the Canon EOS R. So I'm gonna switch back and forth. So camera A and camera B. Camera A and camera B. Let's take a look at one more shot. Camera A and camera B. Camera A and camera B. And by now you probably realize that Jonathan is a phenomenal dancer. And also camera B is a cinema camera. I think it's kind of obvious for two reasons. One, the colors, the red just has the cinematic quality to it. And also the lack of dynamic range in the EOS R. The highlights just kind of fall off the cliff and become white, whereas the red is a little bit more gradual and natural looking. Now during those shots, I had this camera in 4K, 24 frames per second in all eye codec. And that all eye codec in this camera is pretty significant. It goes up to 480 megabits per second. A whole lot of cameras out there shooting 4K that goes up to maybe like 100 megabits per second, but 480, that's a big leap. As for the color profile, I just left it in the setting that I shoot all my YouTube videos on, which is a slightly modified neutral. So I pop it into neutral and I customize it a little bit. I add one bar of sharpness back in, and then I drop the contrast all the way down, but then I add one back in, and same with the saturation. So second from the very bottom. This is gonna give me a little bit more dynamic range and color space to work with. And the sharpness at just one bar is just enough to where I feel like I like it, but it's not overly done. And I like shooting on this mode because it looks pretty decent right out of the camera and I just have to do slight, slight adjustments to it in post. So I'll add a little bit of sharpening and contrast and saturation back in, but I have a little bit more control by pulling it back down on the camera. So now let's take a look at some shots in my studio. And at first glance, it's almost difficult to tell which one is which. They both look pretty good. It's not till you take a closer look until you realize the camera on the right actually has quite a bit more dynamic range because the LCD on the back of the camera looks exposed on the right, but on the left, it's blown out. So yep, the camera on the right has more dynamic range. So it's the cinema camera and it's actually no surprise because it's the Airy Alexa, the king of dynamic range. And in these shots, the Airy does have some ingenue cinema lenses on here. So that is gonna affect the picture characteristics. But if we're just looking at dynamic range here, the Airy Alexa, destroys and it becomes more obvious the harsher the lighting gets. But here's the thing, when I shoot in the neutral mode on this camera, I do it for the convenience of the file, the simple color grade and all that. But if I'm trying to get maximum performance out of this camera, I'm definitely shooting Canon Log or C-Log. That's gonna give me the most dynamic range and a nice flat color profile so that I can go in and grade it. Now internally, it could only record 8 bits, so less colors than a high-end professional camera but the good news is that c-log is designed to work well with just an 8-bit codec of course you could maximize it even more by sending it externally to a 10-bit external recorder but internally we got 8-bit so let's switch from the neutral color profiles and we're going to pop them both into log and so much more of that dynamic range preserved in that canon eos r looking at the waveform the airy does still look like it still has that advantage you can see on the highlights as well as in the shadows it's more defined the can is looking decent, but you could definitely see up top it compresses quite a bit more and the bottom looks more like a flat line. But enough technical shit. What do they look like when they're graded? I'm going to apply Airy Standard Rec 709 LUT, and I'm honestly not a huge fan of the LUTs that Canon provides for their C log. So let's start off with just manually adding in some contrast and playing with the curves a little bit. And you know what? The image is looking decent, but far from perfect. The blue and orange is actually holding up pretty well, but when it comes to this purple, which is a little bit more of a difficult color to work, with oof, you just see it just falling apart not a hundred percent sure how much of this you'll be able to see after this video goes through youtube's compression but basically the area alexa looks perfectly smooth while the eos r looks like it's
it's banding and clumpy and doesn't look pretty. So I'll put it this way. I really like Canon's log and I think it's awesome that they put it into such a simple and basic camera. It's definitely powerful. But when you put it under a lot of stress, there's just no comparison when you put it next to a proper cinema camera, which honestly shouldn't be a surprise to anybody because we're comparing a $2,000 camera to something that's worth about 70K. I've always been amazed at how good the Aerie looks even with terrible lighting. I mean, clearly we're blown out here, but still it looks good and natural. On other cameras, if you have a hot spot on your face, it looks terrible. But the Canon doesn't lose in every aspect. I mean, obviously it's a lot less expensive, a lot smaller, compact, lighter weight. And the dual pixel autofocus in here is awesome. It's very convenient to have and be able to throw this onto a gimbal and just solo operate a gimbal shot while letting this do the autofocus is super convenient. The high-end cinema cameras don't offer any of these autofocus features. And also this camera destroys in low light performance. Now there is that one red in particular, the red Gemini, which is supposed to be a beast in low light, but on a standard red like that one or the Airy Alexa, I generally try to keep it under 2000 and around 3200 is when it starts to really bug me. But with the EOS R, you could just keep driving that ISO up there. And also when it comes to the sharpness, let's do some pixel peeping. When we slap the same lens on both the cameras, it's surprising how close that EOS R is to the much, much more expensive cameras. There's no doubt that for a mirrorless camera, this EOS R is incredibly powerful, but I think there's three things that still separate the image quality between this and a cinema camera. One is dynamic range. These cinema cameras just record a crazy amount of information in both the highlights and the shadows and just retains all of that. Even if you mess up and overexpose by a few stops on the EOS R, you're pretty screwed. But on a camera like the RED, more than likely you can recover a majority of that info. Next is just the pure raw power out of these cameras. I mean, these cinema cameras can shoot in these highly uncompressed raw files and even frame rates. At 120 frames per second, you have to drop this camera down to 720p. But the RED can shoot 120 frames per second in 4K raw. And finally, there's color. These cinema cameras just have a certain look to them that just makes it look cinematic. It's kind of hard to explain, but when you look at it, you go, ah, oh, that looks like a movie. And my question was, is it possible to color grade this camera to look a lot more like a cinema camera? And this is the part where I try to sell you my brand new LUTs. Now, I wish I could say these LUTs are perfect. Just, hey, get the LUTs and your EOS R will look like a $70,000 Aerie Alexa. But the truth is every single time the lighting changes, the white balance changes, the setting changes, the way you have to grade this camera to look more cinematic always changes. So there's not one just plug and play LUT. And after months of tweaking it, I think I finally got it to the point where it generally pushes this camera in the right direction. It's not perfect in every setting, but my goal was to get the colors that are coming out of this EOS R and kind of shaping it and funneling it into colors I would more often see in these cinema cameras. Now these LUTs are specifically designed based on this EOS R, and I would recommend either shooting in C-Log, I have a set of LUTs for that, or I'd also recommend shooting in that standard neutral color profile that we dialed in earlier. So there's a few LUTs in there specifically for that mode. Oh no, Peter! Oh no, Peter. I have made a more in-depth video about how I like to color grade my video, so I'll link that right there. But if you're using Premiere, you can drop this in under the creative LUTs panel, and then you can adjust the intensity because on some shots, it looks good with a lot of it laid on, and sometimes you need to peel it back. So get that to the spot where you think it's pretty decent, and then you could go in and fine tune your shadows, highlights, exposure, saturation, all that stuff. So to wrap it up, these cinema cameras still do provide the better image quality. They're more powerful, they're more capable, but these mirrorless cameras are definitely catching up and that gap is getting narrower. Cause before it was like cinema cameras, great. DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, bad. But now it's getting to the point where these are no longer bad. These are good versus great. So if you have yourself a solid DSLR, you'd be surprised at how close this is to a super high-end camera. It's not like as soon as you pick one up, all your footage is gonna become amazing already. You should be able to get good stuff here and it'll look better there. Anyways, let's wrap this up by reading a few comments from my last video, which was, 
I don't remember what it was about. Oh, about the wire camera. <laughs> Top comment was from Ted. Only Potato Jet would be making a YouTube video at the wedding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, I can't put this camera down. Everyone that knows me closely knows that this comes with me everywhere. Sam be like, it's your wedding, but it's my dance floor. <laughs> that's, that's Sam everywhere he goes. Maybe we should hit up a bunch of spots in town and make a little dance montage for Sam. Carlito says, Gene is that friend you don't want to be with during parties. You'll probably end up with cinematic drunk vids. You are absolutely correct. I have so much blackmail material of cinematic drunk friends footage. Jake Sidney says, did you know that on the Fail Army TV show, you earned yourself a medal of honor? That was hilarious. Whoa, okay, hold up. This must be my paragliding crash video because a while ago, they hit me up asking if they could use my footage. And I said, yeah, go for it. I didn't know anything actually came out of it. I don't even know how to find it. But if anyone knows where that video is, send me a link, please. I want to check it out. Why is it that every time I end up on TV, TV, it's either just somewhere deep in the background of some random show or it's a fail video. Like when I was in middle school, I was having this Roman candle battle with my brother's friend and he was recording it and it looked like I shot him in the eye. It actually hit right here, bounced off the side of his head. Stupid idea. Don't do that. But that video actually got kind of popular on the internet and it actually ended up in some TV show. Dylan was my neighbor at the time and he calls me. He's like, I just saw you on TV shooting Roman candles at your friend.